What is going on guys? This is Gaines Gaming. Today we are going to be talking about the new leak that just came into Rise of Kingdoms with the two new infantry commanders. This is what I've been super excited about hearing. And so today we are going to be doing a skill review and kind of talking about what this means for the game in terms of how this is going to shape the meta with the new cavalry commanders with Nevsky. And so we are going to talk about how this changes the game with the new infantry commanders especially with the new garrison. So stay tuned, and we'll check it out. All right, guys, so I wanna start us off with letting you guys know that this is a leak, so this could potentially not be true, but we're gonna talk about it like it is. So basically, we're gonna be talking about how these two commanders are gonna be shaping up the game, how they're gonna change the game. I just wanna give a quick shout out to Kingdom 1093 for sharing these screenshots. That way we can kind of review them, kind of talk about them, and talk about how it's gonna change the game how you should invest in these commanders and so on so first of all our two commanders are Scipio Africanus um, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right but if you if I'm not let me know down in the comments um, and then we also have Vlavius Itidus um, I think that's how you say it um, but these are our two commanders that are we are going to be reviewing today so again these are leaks so they're not 100% accurate they could be wrong the skills could change a bit so take it with a grain of salt we're going to be reviewing these as if they are 100% accurate. So we are going to start off with Scipio Africanus. This is one that I am more excited about, just looking at the skills. And so we are going to dive deeper into the skills, what they mean, and how it's going to impact the game. So let's start off with Scipio Africanus. So his first skill is called Unmatched Strength. This is his active skill, Rage Requirement of 1000. This is going to deal direct damage up to three targets in a forward-facing fan-shaped area. Damage factor 1500, which is amazing. That's pretty similar to XY. Of course, damage dealt is going to be reduced by 15% with each target. That's with every AoE. But then also, successfully hit targets also suffer 10% reduced health for 3 seconds. That is huge. That's going to get up to 30% health and 2000 direct damage factor. And so this is an amazing active skill. High damage, 30% health reduction. This is a huge counter to Nevsky because this basically just takes away his extra health. It'll also just absolutely wreck everything in the field with this reduced health and also doing a ton of damage to their enemies as well. Let's go on to the passive skill. So the passive skill is called All Conquering. This is going to increase infantry attack by 40% when you have it all the way up to level 5 and their march speed by 15% again at level 5. They will also gain 2% increased march speed outside of Alliance territory up to 10% when you get it to level five. And this is also just incredible. 40% infantry attack plus 25% march speed is just absolutely insane. That is gonna be so fast. You're gonna be able to catch up to any cavalry unit. It's just gonna be able to wreck basically every single cav unit in the field. So this is a direct counter to the XY Nevsky, Nevsky XY, all those combos that people have been using in the field, just absolutely wrecking everything. This is a direct counter to Nevsky, and this is what we've been waiting for, kind of shaking up the meta again. And so this is what we've been waiting for with the infantry counter to Nevsky. So this third skill is called Strategic Pressure. It's a passive skill where it's going to increase infantry health by 20% when attacking troops. So when you're in combat, your health is going to be increased by 20%. So that is not going to count if you're just walking through the field. So you have to be directly in combat. That will also not count if you are being attacked and not attacking the enemy back so say you are marching your troop back to your home or back to your city and someone starts to hit you you are not getting this additional 20 percent health so you want to make sure you are attacking the troops back in order to get this additional health and then also it's going to grant an additional 10 percent chance of dealing additional damage for three seconds damage factor of 500 and this effect can trigger once every eight seconds so a little bit of a cooldown on this one but you do get that 20% infantry health and 500 direct damage factor over time. And so that is going to be up to 1500 damage factor, with the 10% chance of that happening, which is incredible. Adding that onto his active skill of dealing 2000 damage in a fan shaped area, that's even better. That's just absolutely ridiculous amount of damage. Going on to their fourth skill. This is called Testudo Formation. This is also a passive skill. When troops on the map take skill damage, there is a 50% chance of reducing damage by 10%, and 
and forming a shield that covers up to three allied troops for three seconds. So this sounds a lot like Alex. So this is going to be helping out your allies. When you start to level this up, that 50% chance of reducing damage is going to go up to 30% damage reduced taken. And then the shield is also going to be increasing up to 500 damage factor. So very similar to Alex in terms of ramping up. This is just looking like an absolute home run of a commander. And so I'm really hoping that this one is real because I will definitely expertise this commander when he comes out. And then finally, his expertise skill is called Fury Rage. This is going to increase skill damage dealt by 10%. And when the target is silenced, Rage grows 30% faster. So this tells me that this might be a new commander that you can pair with your Guan. Because when Guan does silence, you're going to start to gain Rage 30% faster, which is just absolutely insane that's going to be such an amazing combo to use in the field so if you're using guan in the field and you're also using this march you are going to be doing tons of damage you're going to be silencing the target and you're going to be growing more rage 30 percent faster which is just absolutely insane and then i think the best thing of all this one comes from the wheel of fortune and so this is one thing that made me kind of skeptical about this commander is this little area that says epic cpo and legendary cpo cannot be used in the same march this makes me start somewhat doubt the reality of this commander which again i really hope this commander is real and that this is a a true leak but this is something to be skeptical about because i don't believe there's any other pair in the game where you cannot pair them together and it is also kind of weird that another cpo is being released in the game so again take all this with a grain of salt but but just on paper, this commander looks absolutely amazing. And I really hope it comes true because I would definitely invest my legendary commander sculptures in this commander. All right, now let's talk about Vlavius Aetis. This is a, another infantry commander who is also a garrison with a skill tree as well. And so this is going to be quite interesting to see how this fares against cavalry as well. So let's dive in and see if this is going to be... A good counter to the xy nevsky rallies that have just been absolutely destroying everything in its path so let's take a look so the first skill is going to be the spear of the empire this is a rage requirement of 1000 it's going to de deal direct damage of 2300 holy crap to the target the target has been reduced to 50 percent or fewer units remaining it deals continuous additional damage for three seconds oh my goodness this is just holy crap that can't be real <laughs> um so this is an absolute ideal commander to use in the garrison because you are almost always going to be below 50% units. And so this is going to deal continuous damage to the target for three seconds up to 150 damage factor. So this is very, very intriguing already on how this is going to be shaping up the garrison meta with the cavalry rallies that have been just wrecking everything in its path. So let's move on to the second skill here, which is the shield of eagles. This is going to increase infantry's attack by 15%. And when troops are garrisoned, infantry units defense is increased by 15% and also its health by 15%. So when you are in a garrison, your infantry is gaining 45% of stats. This is just absolutely nasty for a garrison, especially if you are doing all infantry, which you almost always should do a full, full unit type because unless you are using YSS, but in this case, this is just an amazing skill where you're going to be picking up 45% of stats. That is almost unheard of. And so this is already looking to be an amazing commander for, for your garrison. Moving on to the third skill, the defense of Gaul. This is going to increase troops counterattack damage dealt by 20%. When troops are garrisoned, normal attacks inflict a debuff on the target that increases the damage they take from infantry by 1% for every 15 seconds stacking up to 10 times. So this can get up to 10% increased damage, and this effect can trigger once every 10 seconds. And so for an additional 10% damage for 15 seconds is nasty. Adding on an extra 20% counter damage, that is just that makes it almost impossible to swarm because you're just gonna take so much counter attack damage when you're swarming this garrison. And so this makes it nearly immune to swarm when it also inflicts a debuff on the target that increases the damage that you're taking as well for 15 seconds. So swarming this garrison is almost a no-go. You can almost not do this just because that counterattack damage plus the debuff that you're going to get from this commander. 
Moving on to the fourth skill, this is called the Victory of Challenge. It increases all damage dealt by 10% when launching a normal attack against a target. Inflicted with an additional damage effect, there is a 100% chance of inflicting a silence for 2 seconds. This effect can trigger once every 7 seconds. So this looks like it's going to pair very very well with the legendary CPO because CPO is going to be increasing its rage production by 30% when the enemy is silenced and this is going to give a 100% chance of silence. So this is just going to be a rage machine if you pair Flavius and CPO together where you're just going to be producing so much rage because you're going to silence them every 7 seconds which is just absolutely nasty which makes it seem like this is going to be a great march for swarming as well. If you pair this with a Guan, you're going to be silencing the garrison almost every five seconds, which is just absolutely nasty. And so this is, again, this is only when launch launching a normal attack against the target. This is not when you are in the garrison. So this is not going to count when you are garrisoning a flag, a pass, or anything like that. This is only when you are in the field attacking with normal attack damage. And so finally, let's move on to the expertise skill. That is going to be the Song of the Nibelungs. Um, that is going to be decreasing all damage taken by 10%. When using an active skill, there is a 30% chance of inflicting two stacks of a debuff on the target troop. Each stack increases their damage taken from infantry by 1% for 15 seconds, stacking up to 10 times. And this effect can trigger once every 10 seconds. So again, this is just an amazing amount of debuffs. So instead of that one stack, you are getting two stacks of the debuff up to 20% of increased attack, which is incredible. Plus you are decreasing your all damage taken by 10%. This is insane. This is gonna be such an amazing garrison commander and you absolutely need to get this commander for your garrison because it is going to, it is going to wreck XY and Nevsky in the field and in garrison and flags. And so this commander is from the Mightiest Governor. And so this is gonna be the only way you can get this commander. They might be available in the Legendary Tavern. We'll have to see if they do add these commanders in the Legendary Tavern. But my final thoughts is that Vlavius Aedas is going to completely shake the meta for rallying objectives because it is going to basically counter Nevsky and XY 100%. On top of that, you have CPO Africanus who is just going to, again, counter XY and Nevsky and just absolutely wreck all cavalry marches with its insane march speed, rage production, AoE damage, and with that, a ton of AoE damage. And then plus, with Lavius Aedas, if you pair them together, you're having 2300 direct damage factor on top of your 2000 direct damage factor in a fan-shaped area. So pairing these two together is just absolutely nasty, and this is going to 100% shape the meta these are two commanders that I am definitely going to plan on expertising if they are real. And so again, take all this with a grain of salt. This is not directly from Lilith yet. And so just wait until they confirm this or deny this. But until then, I really hope that these two commanders are real and that we see them in the game in the next couple of weeks or months. I will be returning back to Season of Conquest within about two months. We are in our KVK3. So you guys stay tuned to the channel for that. I'll be doing some streaming once I get my new PC. So stay tuned for that. I'll be sending out some messages on my Discord as well for dates. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video and have a great day.